Hi everybody, we're going to look at some different types of chemical bonding today. There are three main types of bonds that we need to consider. Those are ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds. So ionic bonds are electrostatic interactions between ions, uh, typically uh, metals and nonmetals. and we've talked about these a lot in class so far. Uh, Covalent bonds, which we have mentioned, those are a sharing of electrons between two atoms. Typically, those are both nonmetals. And last but not least, we have metallic bonding, uh, which is how different metal, metal atoms bond together uh, in a solid, solid metal. So first, we'll look at ionic bonds. These are bonds that result uh, when we have an electrostatic attraction between a positive and negative ion. And these are largely governed by Coulomb's law, which we'll explore uh, in a bit. So these involve transfers of one or more electrons from one atom to another. A very typical example is sodium chloride. Uh, here we see one of the electrons from the sodium atom being transferred to the chlorine atom. So now we have a positive sodium and a negative chlorine and those combine in, in what we call a crystal lattice. Covalent bonds are quite a bit different. Uh, in these type of bonds, we don't see a complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another, but they instead we see two atoms sharing electrons between uh, the nuclei. Uh, so there's three, three huge forces that we need to consider when we look at covalent bonding. Those are the attractions between the electrons and the nuclei, uh, but there's also, as so we have two atoms coming together, we see repulsions between the two electrons, plus we also see repulsion between the two nuclei. Uh, so here we have a very simple example, or, which is hydrogen, or H2. Uh, so there is, you can see the attraction between the electrons uh, and the protons, and that's what holds the two hydrogen atoms together. Uh, but we also have a repulsion force between the two nuclei of the hydrogen, uh, plus the electrons themselves will spread each other out as they push each other away. The last type of bonds we really need to consider are metallic bonds. These aren't really covered on the AP exam, so we can largely ignore these. Uh, but you can think of metallic bonds as a series of positive cations, where the electrons free roam freely throughout uh, the different cations. Here's a, a picture I found while doing uh, some quick Googling, uh, which shows the difference between ionic and covalent bonds. On the right, we see a covalent bond, where we have two different atoms and that those electrons, there's one in each, and those end up being shared between the two atoms. Then on the one on the right, we see one of the electrons completely uh, being transferred from one side to the other, uh, creating a positive and negative ion. Uh, here's another picture I found which, which illustrates the same thing. Uh, we have a sodium and a chloride uh, ion. Right, we already s the transfer the electron has already been complete. And we start to see alternating uh, positive and negative ions in the crystal lattice. And down at the bottom we see oxygen, which has four electrons that are shared uh, between the two oxygen atoms. So now that we have the, the major types of bonds established, uh, we want to ask ourselves, how can we tell if something is going to form an ionic bond or a covalent bond? Which, and that's a really good question. Uh, so if you take any two atoms, there should be a way uh, to figure that out. So in order to do that, we're going to use a concept called electronegativity. Uh, you can think of electronegativity as uh, a desire for an atom to pull electrons towards it. Uh, so you'll notice that fluorine up in the top right has the highest. So that means fluorine likes to pull electrons towards it. Uh, so in order to, uh, to tell if something's going to form an ionic bond or a covalent bond, we need to look at the difference of electronegativities between two different atoms. So if we take any two atoms and we compare the electronegativity difference between the two, uh, in general, if we see that that difference is greater than two, we can expect an ionic bond to form. If that electronegativity difference is less than 0 0.5, uh, we can generally consider that a covalent bond, or more specifically, a nonpolar covalent bond. Uh, then if it's anywhere between 0 0.5 and two, we call that a polar covalent bond. So what exactly is a polar covalent bond, you may ask? Well, if you take two things of different electronegativities and put them together, uh, the one that's more electronegative wants to pull those electrons towards it. Uh, so the more electronegative atom between the pair is going to pull, pull those electrons towards it, then that 
side of the atom is going to be slightly more negative than uh, the other side, but it's not quite completely negative like you would see in an ionic bond. Uh, so to wrap things up, there are three main types of bonds that we're concerned with. Uh, we have ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and those can further be divided into polar covalent and nonpolar covalent. Uh, then we do have the metallic bonds, which don't play a huge role in the AP test. Uh, and we can use electronegativity to determine which type of bonds will typically form between atoms. Uh, so that will be it for this video. Uh, coming up next, we're going to look at uh, some of the energy in both ionic and covalent bonds, uh, particularly lattice energy plus bond enthalpy.